Being a very fast racer takes a lot of attributes. Skill, mental preparation, the right equipment, and an elite athlete level of strength and fitness. We're here at Atherton HQ and we've got coach Alan Millway on hand. What sort of training do they do in the off season? Uh, we try and keep it quite varied for them. So they'll be on the road bikes, they'll obviously be in the gym, uh, and they'll have intervals on their turbo trainer on the road bikes as well. Um, and as we approach the season, obviously we're looking to maximize the strength and power. So looking specifically at strength, G's known as one of the strongest guys out there. Do you think you can make Scott like that? Uh, I'll give it a go. I'll give it a go. Yeah, well, well, I'll leave you to it. I'm a bit, bit busy. I'm just checking the, checking the torque on my seat phone. One of the easiest things to start with is a squat. So there are various uh, different ways we can do it with dumbbells, with a barbell, front squat, back squat, but we're going to look at a back squat. So a very simple back squat. So let's have a look. Just a nice, just an empty bar. Okay, one more rep for me. That become re -rack it. A couple of things before we start to put any weight on the bar. What I'd like you to do is actually try and take a narrow grip. Okay. Because that will bring your hands close to your shoulders, lift your chest up. And because what's happening is you're getting quite low, but then you're losing your, your trunk. Yeah, I did see that in the mirror. Yeah, so. and also your feet are pointing absolutely dead straight forward. If you open your toes out just slightly and you and push your knees gently outwards as opposed to straight forwards, that will help your hips sit in and keep a nice posture because the squat is great, not just for the legs, but also the trunk. Yep. Okay, so give that a go with the empty bar as well. So I got my, That's got my thumbs in a little bit yeah. narrow. Wrap those thumbs around. Carl, ready? You can feel the difference. Yeah, lift your chest up a little bit. That's it, turn your toes slightly out. Now just remember what I said about those knees as you sink down. So instead of driving the knees forward, push them out and stop there, pause, and come back out. Fantastic. Okay, so we'll just put 10 kilos either side. If you're learning the movement or going up in the weight, we want to keep the reps down so the quality stays yeah. up. We don't want to just keep putting weight on the bar, but when you do put more weight on the bar, your technique if you're off balance, you'll really notice it with a bit of weight on the bar. Okay, so let's have let's another try look. Try again. Okay, so look forward, clench that bum so it's nice and tight, push those knees out, and pause, and up you come. Lovely job, two more of them. Pause, and up. And one more. Fantastic, and re rack. Perfect. Well, I think you're ready to uh, 100 kilos in the bar. <laughs> Let's give it a shot, yeah. <laughs> so when you're training, you'd be looking to work in a rep range of probably between three and five reps and between three and five sets. Keep the reps down to keep the quality of the movement up. Another really good exercise that's very simple uh, is a deadlift. Simply put, we want to lift a relatively heavy weight from the floor. Really, really good for our legs and trunk. Um, and also shoulder and posture. So um, what we've done is we've just put the bar with 40 kilos on it. Yeah. So we've lifted the bar up off the floor. So if you are deadlifting in any other gym, sometimes they've got small plates. We don't really want the bar any lower to the floor. So always try and set it up so it's this height. Um, and let's have a look, see where we're starting from. So again, really good starting point. You've got good mobility. Um, you're lifting the bar up in a really safe way. So the first movement is through the legs and then up you know, you're at the hinge of the hips. The only thing that really you're doing is you're sitting quite a long way back on your heels. We don't actually want to be sat back on the heels because what that means is the bar is having to come around our knee, up into our waist, and then on the way back down, it has to come away from us. Now with a lightweight, that's no problem, but when you start to put a heavy weight on, if your balance isn't right, it will pull you off balance. So what we'll do is we'll set this up the same again, and all I want you to think about when you dress the bar, is trying to feel the weight through this part of your foot. Okay, yeah. Okay, so push your knees forward, chest up as before, and stay leaning over the bar, and once it comes past the knees, then nice and tall. And on the way back down, there's no bend in the knees to start with. So you lean back over the bar, till it comes to the knees, and then to the floor. And all the time, the weight is through the mid part of my foot. Okay, okay? So great pointer, good. thank you. Okay, if you do one more rep, and this time, try and keep the bar quite close to your thighs on the way back down. Almost brush your thighs on the way back down. There we go, lovely. Good lift. Top job. You can get carried away. Um, as the weight goes up, some people switch their grip out to lift more weight. But if you're looking to train your grip strength, I wouldn't do that. I'd try and keep it in what we call a clean grip. Similar to the squat with the deadlift, as we're looking to build strength, we want to keep the reps relatively low. 
Uh, so I wouldn't go more than five reps and three to five sets again as a starter. So we've done deadlifts. Now onto a bit of plyometrics. What can I expect from this? So as we're training for power, we've got sort of the slow bar movements to build that foundation of strength. And now we're going to look at a, a much faster movement. Uh, this is a simple box jump. We're not going to look at any drop down, so I'm not going to sort of stress you eccentrically. I want to look at a concentric, try and get you jump as high as you can. And we put a relatively high box here. All I want you to think about is using your arms as well. So don't just think about your legs. Swing your arms through and try and send yourself up, not forwards. Yeah. Okay, what I'm looking to do is get your hips fully extended, your knees fully extended, and your toes pointing as you go in the air. So everything's in extension. Because you obviously you're worried about getting onto the box, yeah. you're jumping up and then you're lifting your, your knees right up to your chest. Don't worry about it to start with. You will have the height to get you onto that box, yeah. okay? So try and get that extension because you're not getting the extension in the hip. So what we're looking to do is generate as much force and power as we can upwards, yeah. and then we're just landing back down on the box. Yeah, good lad, and step down. And we've just put that step there because obviously if you're coming down relatively cold and landing, that's when the injuries can happen if we're not warmed up. So with this, you want to, to vary the height of the, the box and also um, make sure that every rep is to your maximum ability. So if you go past six or seven reps, you probably will lose that explosiveness. So we've done some plyometrics for the lower body. What do you recommend for the upper body now? The upper body's actually quite hard to train when it comes to explosive movements. There's lots of different things that we do for that. But one of the simplest things that we can do that we'll demonstrate now is simply uh, a ball throw. Um, different ways of doing it, but what I'd like you to do is lie down on the mat, head at this end, face up. So I've got a four kilo ball here. I'm just gonna drop the ball to you. I want you to catch it and then fire it up as hard as you can. Okay, you ready? And again. And one more. Excellent. So, this is four kilos. Obviously, you can increase the weight you're using, but really, we want that ball going as hard as we possibly yeah. can. So, there's lots of variations you can do with this from the height of dropping the ball to the weight of the ball and to the number of reps. Again, I look to be really explosive with each rep, so I wouldn't go more than six or seven reps. So, that's it for training at the Atherton HQ. Thank you for some great tips. Put me through my paces as well. For more great videos on GMBN, why don't you click up there for a training playlist? Check down there for G's Pro Bike and... And click here to subscribe. It's free. And if you enjoyed this video, give us a thumb up like.